Hello, welcome back to Connect the World. I want to recap our developing story this hour. Portions of a report into how Donald Trump and his allies tried to overturn the 2020 presidential election in Georgia has just been released. Seen and Sarah Murray is tracking this story. So you've got some of those excerpts now. What are you learning, Sarah? That's right. You know, we got only a sliver of this special grand jury's months of work. You know, they interviewed 75 witnesses. They were really digging into efforts by Donald Trump and his allies try to overturn the 2020 election in Georgia. And one of the things that jumps out is they released this paragraph about the special grand jury's concerns that there were witnesses who appeared under oath who may have lied. You know, they're basically encouraging the district attorney in this case to pursue perjury charges if she believes the evidence is there. They say seek appropriate indictments for such crimes where the evidence is compelling. That's an indication we could see some perjury indictments in this case going forward. They also wrote in their introduction, you know, they heard from all these witnesses. They heard from technical experts. They heard from poll workers. They heard from Georgia officials and they concluded unanimously that there was no widespread fraud in the 2020 election in Georgia that could have overturned the results there. Obviously, this is a claim that Donald Trump has made that is false, uh, that there was this widespread fraud. This is a claim his allies have made, and they even note in this introduction that they heard from witnesses who maintained this false claim that there was widespread fraud in the 2020 election. So it sort of gives you a little bit of an idea of the tone of the tenor of the grand jury, but this real meat that we know is in their report that has not been made public is who, if anyone, they recommended should face criminal charges. That is still remaining under wraps. The judge said essentially it was premature to release that because so far no one has made is faced charges in this case. So now it's really over to Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis to decide if she's going to go to a regular grand jury and seek indictments. And if so, is that going to be for the former president? Is that going to be for his allies? Is that going to be for others who may have lied to the grand jury? All right, we are going to continue on this story. Sarah Murray, thanks so much for that update. I want to bring in legal analyst Jennifer Rogers. She's a former federal prosecutor and a law professor at NYU and Columbia Universities. Good to have you with us. So you've had a chance to read through some of these excerpts too that have been made public this hour. And while a special grand jury can't issue indictments, it can recommend charges. But at this point in time, it seems like those recommendations haven't been made public. That's right. As, as Sarah said, there's really not much there. They seem to recommend perjury charges against certain witnesses. We don't know who yet, but that's pretty interesting because there were some Trump allied witnesses, big names who testified in front of this grand jury, including Rudy Giuliani, Lindsey Graham, Michael Flynn uh, and others. So it'll, it'll really be interesting to see when we get to see the rest of the report who they recommend charging with perjury. And uh, of course, most of the report remains under seal, but it certainly does suggest that they have recommend charges against people. We'll just have to wait and see uh, how far they go and what charges they suggest bringing. So at this point in time, the only parts released were the intro, the conclusion, as well as jury's concerns about witnesses lying under oath. What could happen to those witnesses if they face charges and they are indeed found guilty of lying under oath? Well, you know, perjury carries typically uh, up to a five-year sentence. This is uh, a Georgia state charge. This would not be a federal charge. This is for testifying falsely in front of the Georgia grand jury. So they would have to go down there and face those charges. You know, I do expect, though, that some of these witnesses uh, may have uh, pled the Fifth Amendment. Some of these witnesses actually have criminal exposure of their own. Uh, this is why I'm so interested to see who actually is on their list of, of recommended perjury charges? Because of course, someone who takes the fifth and refuses to testify uh, won't have any won't have any perjury there. So it'll be interesting to see. But you know, they will have to face those criminal charges in Georgia state court, uh, just like anyone charged with any uh, of these charges by the grand jury ultimately will have to do. So this was a major investigation, but much kept secret. What should we make of the fact that so much of this report has been kept secret? Well, grand jury investigations are secret until someone is actually charged with a crime. Our system provides that the investigation not be revealed publicly. It's in order to protect people who ultimately may not be charged with a crime. So only 
those investigations that result in charges will become public. That's one of the rules, both of the federal system and of Georgia's state system as well. So it's actually highly unusual to hear anything about a grand jury investigation. This one, of course, has spilled into the public realm uh, because of the names involved, because there's such public interest in following this story. So reporters have, for example, kind of staked out and seen who's going into the grand jury to testify. So we actually know more than we normally would in a grand jury investigation. So I guess we should count ourselves lucky there. But certainly we'll know a lot more uh, as the evidence pertains to people who are charged once those charges are filed. Once you get litigating into court, that's when you really start to see the information coming out. And just quickly, any sense of a time frame as to when that could happen? So Fannie Willis told the judge overseeing the grand jury that she was going to make charging decisions imminently, but I think imminently to lawyers means something different than kind of everyday <laughs> imminent. She clearly meant a matter of weeks and not hours or even days because it's been a couple of weeks since she made that statement. So I think she and her folks are turning over the evidence, trying to decide how to do it, what charges they want to bring. And, you know, there are really some interesting, unprecedented issues here. I mean, the notion of charging a former president of the United States with a criminal offense has never been done before. So they're really going to want to think through not only should they do it, but logistically what happens next. How do you arrest him? How do you bring him in for processing? I mean, these are things that have never been done before, so they're going to need a lot of forethought. So if she's actually thinking about charging the former president, those are some of the additional things that she'll be thinking of. Certainly a lot of interest in this story. Jennifer Rogers, good to have you with us. Thanks very much.